Why, instead of denying the Chronovisor's existence, would the Vatican instruct its followers not to use it? Could it be because the Vatican actually had the Chronovisor device hidden away deep in its secret archives? But if not a window into the past, perhaps what is hidden in the Vatican's secret archive is a look into the future. On May 13, 1981, Pope John Paul II was shot four times in an attempted assassination by a gunman in St. Peter's Square at the heart of Vatican City. The Pope was badly wounded, suffering severe blood loss as he was rushed to the hospital. Yet, somewhat miraculously, he survived. As he recovered, he began to attribute his survival to Our Lady of Fatima, the Catholic title for the Virgin Mary, publicly stating, one hand pulled the trigger and another hand guided the bullet. Once he was back on his feet, he even traveled to the city of Fatima to place the bullet which had passed through his chest into the crown of an image of the Virgin Mary, thanking her for her protection. Why would he do this? The answer lies in something that happened 64 years to the day before the assassination attempt. On May 13, 1917, Three children in the city of Fatima, Portugal, received the first of numerous shared visions in which they were purportedly visited by the Virgin Mary. According to the children, the Virgin Mary revealed to them three secrets. These became known as the Three Secrets of Fatima. At the time, the world outside of Fatima, embroiled in World War I, paid little attention to the Portuguese children and their story, and in fact, the supposed Three Secrets might have been forgotten altogether if not for a local bishop. Remembering the story in 1941, the bishop got the last of the children still alive at that point, a nun named Sister Lucia, to write down the secrets in an official document. According to her words, the first secret had revealed to the children the suffering of the souls of the damned. Our Lady showed us a great sea of fire which seemed to be under the earth. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form like transparent burning embers, all blackened or burnished bronze, floating about in the conflagration, now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with great clouds of smoke, now falling back on every side like sparks in a huge fire, without weight or equilibrium, and amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. The second secret seemed even more prophetic, it predicted the end of World War I, still ongoing in 1917, but the start of an even worse war shortly after. As Sister Lucia wrote, The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pope Pius XI. When you see a night illuminated by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God, that He is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecutions of the Church and of the Holy Father. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. In the midst of the Second World War, when this was revealed in 1941, the secret seemed particularly poignant, and the three secrets of Fatima began to achieve mainstream recognition. But what was the third secret, everyone wondered? Cryptically, Sister Lucia would not reveal the third secret, proclaiming she had not been authorized by God to share it. Why would God not mind that the first two were shared, but be against the third? Two years later, having taken ill with influenza, Sister Lucia was ordered by the bishop to write down the third secret, a demand to which she relented lest she die and the secret be lost forever. The secret made its way to the Vatican and into their archives, sealed within an envelope with the shadowy instructions not to open it until 1960, when it will appear clearer. Yet when the time came in 1960, the Vatican released an official statement which announced that it was most probable the secret would remain forever under absolute seal. This led to much speculation. What could the secret reveal that would be so dramatic as to necessitate being suppressed forever? As it was the height of the Cold War, the New York Times even speculated that the third secret might foretell worldwide nuclear annihilation. 
Finally, in 2000, the Vatican came forward and released what they said was the text of the Third Secret. It spoke of a bishop dressed in white, killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him, and how, in the same way, there died one after another the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. These words, the Vatican asserted, must be interpreted as symbolic language referring to the 1981 assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II, the bishop dressed in white, of which the secret spoke. It seemed the pieces of the puzzle had finally, more than 80 years later, been put together. Or had they? As the Vatican informed the public that the much ballyhooed third secret had to do with a failed assassination attempt 20 years past, many were left thinking, that's it? Why the decades of secrecy? Why the absolute seal? Why the initial prohibition from God for something so relatively unremarkable? Some say the answer is simple. The third secret the Vatican released was not the actual third secret, but rather a fabrication. Shortly after the alleged third secret was revealed in 2000, a news article appeared which claimed to present an interview with then Cardinal Ratzinger, who would go on to become Pope Benedict XVI in 2005. According to the article, Ratzinger told the interviewer, there is more than what we published to the third secret. Interestingly, after becoming the first pope since the 1400s to relinquish office while still alive in 2013, Benedict responded to the article in 2016 calling it absolutely untrue and asserting the publication of the third secret of Fatima is complete. Curiously, this was the first and to that point only official statement Benedict had made as Pope Emeritus. Why comment on an article nearly two decades old and not any of the multitude of other things facing the world? To this day, there are many who believe there is more to the third secret than the Vatican has published, including those within the Vatican itself. In fact, Benedict himself proclaimed in a 2010 speech in Fatima that we would be mistaken to think that Fatima's prophetic mission is complete. Then, in 2020, Archbishop Carlo Maria Viano gave an interview claiming that not only was the third secret the Vatican released clearly incomplete, but that the Vatican was involved in a cover-up operation of the true content of the secret. If there is a cover-up, then a cover-up of what? It is interesting to note that back in 1980, almost a year before the attempt on his life, Pope John Paul II gave a speech in Germany in which he said of the Third Secret, If there is a message in which it is said that the oceans will flood entire sections of the earth, that from one moment to the other millions of people will perish, there is no longer any point in really wanting to publish this secret message. It is dangerous to want to satisfy one's curiosity only if one is convinced that we can do nothing against a catastrophe that has been predicted. Four years later, after the Pope had been shot and long since recovered, an article appeared in Jesus Magazine, in which then Cardinal Ratzinger gave an interview claiming he had read the Third Secret and that it related to dangers threatening the life of the world. More alarmingly, the article asserted that Ratzinger had confirmed that the third secret was essentially the same as another prophecy which had been revealed in 1973 in Akita, Japan. There the Virgin Mary had purportedly appeared to a nun and delivered a stunning message. The Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. Could it be that the third secret of Fatima was not about the assassination of a pope at all, but the annihilation of the world? Does it foretell some sort of global apocalypse? And could the Vatican be suppressing this secret even to this day to prevent a global panic? The philosophical questions are heavy. Would you want to know the date of your own death? What would you do if it was your last day on earth? 
More simply, if we're all going to die, shouldn't the Vatican tell us? Moreover, if they wouldn't even tell us about the end of the world, what else might they not be telling us? In 1988, news reports emerged alleging that strange, elongated, distinctly alien-looking skulls had been found during a restoration of the Vatican Library. Rampant speculation ensued, with many suggesting that the Vatican secret archives must be hiding evidence of extraterrestrials. Perhaps a marriage between the Vatican and extraterrestrials is too far out there, too convenient to contemplate, except the Vatican itself does not run from ties to aliens. Consider the words of Cardinal Conrado Balducci, a high-ranking Vatican official since the 1960s and close friend to many popes who, in 1998, instructed followers to remember a paragraph of the New Testament where the Saint Paul refers to Christ as King of the Universe, and not only as King of the World. That means that all beings in the Universe, including aliens, are reconcilable with God. What might Balducci and the Vatican know about the Universe that we don't? In 2009, the Vatican held its first International Astrobiology Conference bringing together top scientists from around the world and Vatican astronomers to discuss extraterrestrial life. As legendary American astronaut Gordon Cooper, one of the original seven people sent to space by the United States, asserted, You want to know about UFOs and little green men? Contact the Vatican. In fact, even the current Pope, Pope Francis, has publicly declared that he would be willing to baptize aliens asking rhetorically, who are we to close doors? Far from closing doors, the Vatican freely seeks to open them. In Tucson, Arizona, the Vatican works with world governments and astrological associations to scour deep space for signs of extraterrestrial life using some of the most powerful telescopes on Earth at the Mount Graham International Observatory. Curiously, the instrument which powers the most formidable of the observatory's telescopes is known as the Large Binocular Telescope Near Infrared Utility with Camera and Integral Field Unit for Extragalactic Research, or LUCIFER for short. Yes, the Vatican is searching for aliens using a telescope named after the devil. So what does the Vatican know about aliens that we don't? about the devil, about the past and the future. Whatever it is, it is most certainly housed deep within their impregnable secret archives. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new, hit subscribe and the bell next to it for future notifications.